always felt that fundraising was nothing more than engaging Colombians in conversation. It was my goal to get 100% of the class to contribute. I really knew everyone in our class. I, I'm able really to write a personal note to everyone, thanking them for their gift. One of the things that I could do is make it easier uh, for, some, for other alumni to have that same personal satisfaction that I did. It's that enthusiasm that will keep the university moving forward. Armin Alex A. Abanessian. When I come back to Columbia, I really feel young again. And I feel young because there's so many new things that are happening, and I'm really privileged to be part of those new things today, just as I was when I was a student. But I had the opportunity to study under Zvi Galil, uh, who turned later to be the uh, dean of the engineering school, and I took a graduate course in algorithms. Uh, that course uh, actually was the basis for much work that I did early in my experience at Goldman. But Columbia is also a family. Uh, my father and my mother uh, were part of uh, Columbia, you know, when, uh, when my father came here. Uh, I was part of Columbia uh, as a high school student, uh, and my son and daughter are here today as well. The first major gift I gave to Columbia was the first major gift I really gave to any institution, which was uh, a chair, uh, a chair named after my father. It was personally so satisfying to me that I created a matching grant that helped match the funding for chairs, allowing, if you will, for a larger and a broader group of people to have that same experience I did. And this program has led to uh, creation of uh, 20 new named professors. This is a critical part of our growth to be a top 10 institution in engineering. Columbia University is greater than the sum of the parts. And so by creating the CAA board, we created an organization that found the whole and added to the sum of the parts. If these walls could talk, uh, what would they say? The blue chairs in the trustees' rooms are taken away uh, and replaced with some ergonomic uh, chairs. And we really just get down to work and see what we can do to help Columbia in its, uh, in its uh, focus. They are the hard hat, hammer-waving engineering and applied scientists who will change the world. To be sitting on the steps of the library and seeing a sea of blue sitting in the middle of the city of New York uh, on a sunny day, words can't express it. Tony Crowley Coffey. I think Barnard is the best of all possible schools for a young, a smart young woman who wants to be in a city. I majored in British history. The other uh, subject, one course in art history, which I took which, with Professor Held, and we're sitting right now in the Held Auditorium, I would walk into a room and I would see paintings and I would remember I'd, what her, Professor Held had said about that painting and I could hear his voice and it's, it's increased my uh, enjoyment of of art and our history hugely in a way that I never anticipated at the time. Greek Games was a remarkable institution. It had existed then for a very long time. I jumped hurdles, not terribly well, but they were hurdles in a classical style. There was dance, there was poetry, there was music, there were costumes to be designed and constructed. So people with almost any interest could be involved. That I met my husband here. Uh, we actually met on the porch of Brooks Hall, and we were married at the beginning of my senior year. You know, obviously, that's the main thing that made a difference in my life here. I just had the sense that our con connections with Columbia and Barnard were constant. There was a year when the woman who was the uh, vice president for development wanted to put an ad on the back of the alumni magazine, uh, which had wedding pictures of four couples who had been Barnard and Columbia couples with a headline saying, we promise to love and honor and give equally to our colleges. We were very close to equal and I was making substantial gifts to Barnard as well as his to Columbia. I have no problem asking people for money. People say, oh, I hate asking people for money. And my response to that is, well, you're not asking for yourself. And you're not even asking for the college itself. You're asking on behalf of the students who need financial aid. When they get a note from me, they know who I am. I'm not just a stranger somewhere. She is a trustee 
and secretary of the Columbia University Club Foundation. First of all, it was things that I chose to do. Nobody was making me do it. And it was things that I got a lot of pleasure from doing for their own sake. This was a bonus with the icing on the cake. Marvin M. Lipman, MD, Columbia College 49, College of Physicians and Surgeons 54. Columbia opened up my eyes to the world uh, in, in many ways. As a, a member of the managerial board of Jester, which was the Columbia Yuma magazine, I think we were the first collegiate ma Yuma magazine to publish a parody of a national magazine. We did a parody of Life magazine called Lif. I was a member of the um, then famous Pony Ballet, which consisted of seven or eight hairy-legged fellows. My wife went to Barnard. She was playing a guitar on the fourth floor of John Jay, and I sort of picked her out. P&S in the early 50s was a, was a medical mecca. My preceptor was a wonderful woman, Abby Knowlton, and she was very much of a humanist and uh, taught me a lot about how to talk to patients, not to talk down to patients, how to respect patients. We now have eight Columbia degrees in the family. Part of my gestalt after leaving um, Columbia College and after leaving PNS was that I sort of owed the school something. The biggest accomplishment was our 50th anniversary when I got 100% of the class to contribute. There was one class member who had not contributed, and he said under no way would he contribute. And I said, Charlie, if you don't contribute, I'm gonna put in $100 for you. So he says, you pushed me to the limit, I'm sending in a check. And the total amount was enhanced by the matching plan. So we were able to raise 1.5 million, and that established two scholarships. I'm gonna ask the graduates of the College of Physician Surgeons, the MDs, to remain standing, and ask for your permission to administer to them the Hippocratic Oath. I think the deliverance of the Hippocratic Oath nearly brought tears to my eyes. It was just a day that I'll never forget. Ira, Brett, Malin, Columbia College, 75. I've always felt that Columbia was a part of me because it gave me so much. It really launched me, it defined me as a person. The atmosphere was tumultuous. Watergate was just happening. We as students were still thinking about the draft, which was just still, still an issue for us. So it was a very um, emotional, very dynamic, and very challenging time to be a student. At the time, there was no such thing as an American Studies major. I was able to petition the Committee on Instruction to have a special major approved, and so I studied with Henry Graff, I studied with Richard Pius, Alan Weston, Roger Hillsman. They were amazing educators in the classroom. When I attended my 25th reunion, I was shocked. I could count the number of classmates on one and a half hands. And it really, for me, was a, was a seminal moment, if you will, because I, I, I knew how much Columbia had meant to me. I continued with my 30th, 35th, and soon my 40th. I wasn't reluctant to ask people for money. Some people are hesitant about that. Anytime you have an opportunity to talk to a Columbian, it's always going to be an engaging conversation. I was asked to chair the class agent program, and for several years we recruited, we trained, and we uh, recognized the efforts of fellow alums who really went out and helped us to raise funds for the Columbia College Fund. I was ecstatic when my children decided they wanted to come here. Being a parent of a Columbia student is amazing. It's a chance to live it again vicariously. Being in cap and gown again, having your name announced to 40,000 graduates of the university, all kinds of emotions start to swell and all kinds of memories start to come back.